Hi, Simon here, and this is Maya 0.54, our latest stable alpha release. And there is a brand new mission to try out called Stratospheric Sulfates. It's about an hour and a half long and quite challenging, but I'm not going to try it here. I'm going to start a custom mission, and I'm going to turn the fauna density down so no creatures come in and start destroying things while I'm trying to demonstrate the new features. So I need to pick some colonists. Um, looks like I have a pretty good set of people here, so I'll just quickly pick some of them. So launch my mission. It's a lot more polished on the UI now. Um, when you mouse over buttons you get text telling you what they are. When you place rooms uh, there's a really really big change. Uh, you now place individual tiles down and as you place them uh, the rooms generate themselves based on the arrangement that you've placed so you can place more interesting tiles and you can right click to get rid of them quite easily. You can also double click and that will just fill big square areas really quickly. Um, you can also do that in uh, the room casing. So again, I want a workshop here, so I'm just going to double click and build a room. So I'll place a workshop table. And I've got to place a door there already. So the uh, UI and mouse is a lot smoother now. You can't really see it here on a video, um, but I've killed a lot of the latency in the interface. Um, the mouse feels really nice and smooth now. The heat system is now fully hooked up. So if you notice, this room has temperature, and the temperature is slowly dropping. That's because the walls of the room are absorbing the heat, and then that's getting leached out by these rock walls, which are the ambient temperature of Maya, which is somewhere between kind of six and eight degrees. Also, mousing over items now is a lot sharper. You'll notice the skinned characters have really kind of perfect mouse over per pixel kind of quality. So this room is now built and we need to place a microwave smelter so we can get some materials going. So you can click and drag like usual um, to rotate but if you uh, kind of found that system annoying you can use the new system which is pressing R and T and that will just rotate it at 45 degree angles. And obviously if you if you place something you don't want you can right click and you can click on it again to pick it up again. So I'm going to place a wind turbine now because I forgot to and we need some electricity, otherwise the base will die. And we're going to need an atmosphere generator, so we'll generate some air. I'll place it slightly more out of the way. Dig out some areas over here so we can get some building materials. And as you can see, this woman's now building the smelter. The smelter used to be fully manual, but now it's semi-automatic, so the colonists can use it if they really need to. Um, but you can use it yourself as well, but just by clicking on it, and it'll be faster if you do that. So as you can see, she's started using it. Um, and when it has minerals in it, I can start using it myself. So it's got minerals in it now, so I can start that before she has. And that'll be safer, the less chance of fire. The smelter generates heat, as you can see coming out the top of it, but if you don't want to use kind of items in your base to generate heat, you can place space heaters, which will turn electricity straight into heat, and you can build wall screens, which are kind of new monitors for the walls. Also circuit breakers, which are also a very interesting new mechanic in the game. So I've got new colonists coming in, so I'm going to call them in. So the new colonists might want some light, so I'm going to place some glow sticks. As you can see a new bit of UI has appeared, um, and this is the colour picker and it allows you to pick between several different colours, um, of cool and warm and neutral colours. And as you see as you go back and forth um, it tells you kind of what type of colour that is, so if you suffer from kind of mild colour blindness you don't need to worry too much as it will tell you. Those colours will affect the colonists moods so you need to be aware of uh, what coloured lighting you're placing in your base and then what effect it's having on things. It'll also affect the growth of plants. So I'm going to place some plants now. You can no longer um, place too many plants to generate all your atmosphere. Um, it's much more accurate now. You'll also notice uh, with this guy running into this room and this woman um, that their breath's starting to show. 
This is a sign that the temperature in the room has gone below 10 degrees. So even though the average of that room was 13 degrees then, um, the air just flowing around that specific character was quite low. So as you can see, we can see the temperature just by clicking on the wall monitor. Or turn it to an aesthetic mode to entertain people. We've got these new email types as well. So as you can see, there's a meter event warning. That's just explaining what happened to cause the meteor. And we also have an earthquake event warning, which I've read a little too late. And that's caused a cave-in by the look of it. Actually, well, it's not, it's not a cave-in, it's a um, hydro well, geothermal vents opened up, which is actually quite useful for us, because although it will kill the atmosphere in the base, it also generates warmth. So our atmosphere is generating warmth there, so the colonists have deprioritized the space heater. If we place one further away from it, it will be more likely to get built, or built quicker. So this colonist has built this light. So as you can see, like with the glow sticks, we can now pick its color. So you can tweak the lighting color for whatever plants you're growing, or for how you want a room to look. Obviously it might affect a constant mood. Obviously the power would go out as I'm trying to demonstrate this, so we've had a solar event warning, which means a coronial mass ejection has happened from the sun and it's sending charged particles our way and it's overloading our grid. So we now have to wait for this event to finish, although these are much more deadly than they used to be because of course your base is continually losing heat. Um, so colonist activities, while they may warm up the base a bit or the creatures wandering around or items working, with your power out, uh, heat starts seeping away pretty quickly and you end up getting pretty cold pretty soon. Colonists can die of hypothermia and they can also die of hypothermia, so that's if they're too hot or they're too cold. Um, our power's now come online so I can show you the circuit breaker. This item connects the grid of uh, every item in your room and on a per room basis, so what you can do is you can use that to shut off the lights and every item in a room. This is useful for if you say have a fire or you have a lot of items that are using a lot of electricity and you just want to switch them off because no one's in that room. Um, it's useful for modifying lighting and such. So you have a colonist building that space heater now. Um, obviously there are other ways to deal with heat loss like digging out the edges of rooms. Cause a lot less seepage or building rooms within the blue room casing. So the space heater is now online so we can turn it on and off easily. Obviously they're the least efficient way to create heat as other items will actually be generating the heat as a byproduct rather than the main use of the energy, although they're useful for quickly warming up rooms. I generally keep mine off until they're needed. So this is Maya 0.54. As you can see there's lots of new interesting things, um, a whole new take on the mechanics of the game. Um, there's a lot more to come though, and I will see you at Maya 0.55. Catch you later.